Last week, we talked about, among other things, the Apple Vision Pro, because it's one of the biggest things that has happened lately in the technology world. And as people that are in the investing world, of course, we look at it through the eyes of an investor. And of course, we want to see how this can impact, if any, Apple in the next few years. And so just a few things that we have learned in the last few days before jumping onto Stratosphere and looking at the financials of Apple is that the global AR VR base today is around 30 million devices. And we're going to actually try to see if this is important, especially in terms of what it means for the Apple Vision Pro. And then something else that we have learned is that S&P is predicting Apple to sell 500,000 devices in the first year, which is going to be 2024. And since each device is going to cost around $3,500, this will amount to $1.75 billion. Of course, we can expect over the next few years Apple to release other versions of the Apple Vision Pro at different prices, but this is a very good estimate, at least from S&P, based on the data that we have now. And is this a big number or is this a small number? And let's actually go to segment and KPIs on Stratosphere, and we can look at, for example, the iPad revenue that Apple has generated. So we can see that we start from September 2012, which is around two years after the release of the product. And the revenues here were around 30, 31 billion dollars, also basically 32 billion dollars in September 2013. So basically this amounts to 10x or 20x the prediction that we have from S&P for the Apple Vision Pro. So it's actually at the moment a very small impact on the revenues of the company Apple. And before diving into the financials of Apple, it's always useful to compare this number to something else, right, when we do some analysis. And so we have talked about this prediction from S&P that Apple is going to be selling 500,000 units of this Apple Vision Pro since the release in the first year, so in 2024. And for example, we can compare this to Meta, right? Because we know that Meta has the Meta Quest Pro and all the other different versions. And we know that Meta is selling around 1 million units per quarter of their Meta Quest devices. So it's a very, very different prediction, right? They're selling twice the amount in a quarter that Apple is forecasted to sell in an entire year, of course, in the first year of the release. But of course, as Guy was also pointing out offline, the MetaQuest is selling at around, we can say, one-tenth of the Apple Vision Pro. So also in terms of revenue, you have to say that, you know, MetaQuest is selling twice the amount of the units that Apple Vision Pro is going to be selling in one year, but it costs also one-tenth of that price. We also still don't know the margins, right, for the Apple Vision Pro, but let's keep these numbers in mind and let's dive on to Stratosphere to look at the financials and specifically the free cash flow of Apple. Now that we have put into context the last big announcement from Apple, let's dive into the financials and let's look at how much growth is baked into the price. One thing that is not as widely reported in the midst of all these technology advances is that the revenue of Apple are actually down in the last 12 months. If we go back actually to segments and KPIs, we can look at who's responsible for that, even though the iPhone is the product with the largest revenue for Apple, it's holding up even in this inflationary regime. But actually, Mac revenues went down very significantly, and the rest is holding up quite well. In general, products revenue is slightly down, services is slightly up. But what is new is that the Mac revenues went from 40 to 33 billions. So this has been a major drag, and in absolute terms, also the iPhone is selling not as well, so 5 billion less. So overall, there is some headwind, but we should also take into consideration that during COVID, Apple's revenue went up very significantly, so there may be just some readjustment to it. In some sense, the analysis for Apple is relatively straightforward because most metrics are extremely good. If we look at the return on invested capital, the margins, their balance sheet, everything is extremely good. So we don't have red flags in the fundamentals of the company. The only red or orange flag may be the price. If we go to cash flow statement, and as usual, we focus on a version of free cash flow that is maintenance free cash flow. So we don't take into account 
the growth capex of the company. So if we focus on the maintenance free cash flow, we'll see that the price is quite high. So let's look at cash flow statement, operating activities. The last line is the operating cash flow. So if we click, we can see that it's relatively bumpy, but growing. And the trailing 12 months figure is lower than the figure in September 22. So of course, we have to be slightly conservative here because we don't know if this is continue to go down. In particular, if we are going to a recession, I think that some of the Apple products and services even though they're sticky because they have network effects and a huge moat can be affected by the recession because they are, after all, discretionary items for the most part. Even though the consumer segment is relatively well positioned in general, this is to give some context as to why I will consider an operating cash flow that is slightly conservative. And in particular, since now it's 110 billions and in September 2020, it was 80 billions, I will consider something around 100. And to get to maintenance free cash flow, we will just subtract the depreciation and amortization, which is around $11 billion in the trading 12 months and is very stable. I mean, slightly increasing because the company is growing. So if we have reduced operating cash flow to 100 billion and then we subtract another 10, 11, we get an estimate of maintenance free cash flow that is 90 billion. So one thing that we may or may not take into account right now is the stock-based compensation. This is 10 billion per year. It's not insignificant. We may consider even a lower number for the maintenance free cash flow, but we'll see that this doesn't change much the situation. So if we consider 90 billions and we use the Warren Buffett way, we just capitalize this at 5%, so we multiply by 20, this becomes $1.8 trillion. So this is an estimate of the fair enterprise value in the case of no growth. So what we are going to do now is that we are going to look in the balance sheet how much net debt they have. So we go to balance sheet, liabilities, and in the last row, we see there's net debt. The net debt in the trading 12 months is $85 billion. So let's say from 1.8 trillion, we go to 1.7, more or less. So this is an estimate of the fair market cap in the case, so under the assumption, that there was no growth. Of course, the market thinks that Apple will grow. And so how much growth is baked into the price? So the market cap right now is 2.8 trillion divided by 1.7, which is our estimate without growth, is 1.64. So 64% higher. So the market is pricing in 64% growth in the future. So of course, first of all, this is nominal growth. Second of all, to translate this into an actual number compounded over a number of years, we should have an idea of the time to maturity for Apple. But in any case, this is more or less our estimate for the growth that is baked into the price. So what is quite interesting is that the price of Apple has gone through some corrections in the last 10 years that would have given us the opportunity to buy it at relatively better prices. So for example, even very recently, at the end of last year or the beginning of this year, the price was around 125 and now the price is 184. So the stock went up 47, 48%. So this is the situation today, but just six months ago, the price was 125. So the price went up by almost 50% in the last six months. And this happened uh, quite a few times. So for example, in 2022, so from the beginning of the year to the end of the year, the price went down almost 30%. And this happened several times. So for example, during the COVID crash, most risk assets were reprised. So also Apple stock was going down and it went down by more than 20%. From October 2018 to 
the end of 2018, so just two or three months, it went down almost 35%. And this happened also in the past many times. So for example, March 2015, May 2016, so quite an extended period of time, the price went down 30%. Then from September 2012 to July 2013, so also here, almost one year, minus 40%. So this is just to say that the stock is going up, of course, over the long period, but it had these quite significant corrections without an economic crisis in between. This is just the market volatility of the stock. This is just to put into context that today's price can change quite significantly. And so we will take a look at it because, of course, Apple is a great company. And if the price is right for us, we will consider it. Great. And this concludes the video for today about Apple. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. You can also consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. This really helps us a lot. And we're going to see you next week. Have a good weekend. Bye bye.